Okay, this is something that I wanted to do for quite a while. Um, and it basically stems from uh, some research that I did, uh, I think, was it last year or the year before. I lost track of time. I think it was the beginning of last year. To do with um, piano temperaments. Piano temperaments. And the reason why I was interested in studying piano temperaments is because I have an upright piano that I tune myself. And I tune by ear. And I don't tune to equal temperament. It's, it's a non-standard temperament. And it works in all 12 keys. Um, which, to my mind at least if you look at the literature, is unusual because most um, non-equal temperament tunings are usually restricted to a handful of keys. I think uh, the Werkmeister is probably the closest thing I know to the sort of temperament that I tune to, but I think that is only good for... Um, if from memory, about 12, uh, 10 out of 12 uh, major keys, 10 out of 12 major keys, the other, depending on which ones you um, tune it based on, as in which, what's your root of your tuning. But mine works fine on all 12 major keys, 12 minor keys, whatever. The uh, the thing that always confused me about uh, my tuning is if I actually looked at the... Um, if I tried to uh, uncover what the tuning was using uh, one of those electronic tuning meters to figure out how many cents deviation either way or f equal temperament it was, and then I looked at the way it compared to... Um, say Pythagorean tuning or um, uh, just intonation, um, a lot of the intervals that I or the deviations from equal temperament um, were um, in the wrong sort of direction than what those two tuning schemes were suggesting. So I never really understood. Well, I, I understood that it actually worked because I like the way it sounds, um, but I never understood why until last year. I'm pretty sure it was last year because I wanted to get to the bottom of it and uh, I wanted a better understanding of other things as well. So I constructed a mathematical model of dissonance. And with that mathematical model of dissonance, I was able to then... Um, employ that in a mathematical minimization technique to minimize the dissonance of the, the approach I used. I minimized the dissonance of um, all the uh, primary, um, primary chords of all 12 keys. So that's basically the root, uh, the fourth and the fifth. So did that for all 12 keys, minimizing the overall dissonance. So that's why it actually works for all, um, well, I'm sort of jumping ahead of myself, but by using that approach, this tuning theoretically should work on all 12 keys. But then when I actually looked at the, um, the tunings that the model came up and compared them with what I'd actually measured off the, my piano, they were almost identical, uh, very close to a very small percentage. So I just happened to stumble across um, why my uh, temperament actually works and what the basis of it was. So, um, but, but, the the real challenge for me in terms of actually demonstrating to other people is the fact that <laughs> I'm very inexperienced as a piano tuner, so the tuning of my unisons are really quite horrible for a start off with. To start off with, the bass end is not particularly good. It's been it's improving with time, but I've 
in t- in terms of my overall experience, I've I've only tuned my piano maybe twelve, ten to twelve times or something like that. So I'm very green as far as tuning goes. So in terms of being able to demonstrate it, it, it was always a problematic issue. But uh, I just happened to um, start looking at uh, what was available online in terms of digital modeled pianos and whether you could actually find one that would um, accept an arbitrary tuning. And I just happened to find one. And it's what's on screen now, the Piano Tech 8 um, yeah, piano model, and that allows for arbitrary tuning. So I was able to in, input my tuning model. So now I've got a, a very reliable way to actually demonstrate what the difference is between an equal temperament tuning and my uh, my novel tuning. And although it's, well, I although I say it's novel, um, I somewhat have my doubts about, like, I find it hard to believe that I'm the first person to ever actually do this tuning. My suspicion is that it's probably been widely used in early history of piano in some form or another or some variation or other, but it's probably never been properly documented and um, never been demonstrated as to why it actually works. And I think it's probably been lost to history because um, it doesn't seem to be, as far as I'm aware, it doesn't seem to be documented because all the alternative um, temperaments that I've seen um, are very restrictive in terms of the number of keys that you can actually use them over. Like I said, the, the most... Um, the most, um, the one that supports most of keys in Western music is the Weckmeister um, one, and I'm unaware of any other. But anyway, so to get to to get to the point, basically, I have this um, rendition that I just did on my digital piano of Bucks. Um, um, prelude in C sharp, uh, not C sharp, C major, the probably very commonly known and widely known and widely played um, uh, prelude. And I'm basically going to use that as demonstration material for this. So, in the first instance, this is the uh, standard tuning. So, uh, there you can see it's all perfectly equal temperament in this case so this is my reference case so I'll play this one first uh, here we go
Okay, that's that one. And uh, now I'll do my alternate tuning. Uh, got to load it first. And I'll illustrate that it isn't uh, standard tuning. Got a different, uh, pressing the wrong button. There you go, you can see it's definitely not standard tuning. The, uh, the actual tuning deviates quite substantially from equal temperament, like plus minus. I think the biggest deviation is probably close to 10 cents off. Yes, there, there's one that's 10 cents off. So, and um, yeah, the reference, the reference pitch was um, C. That's why A is different now. It's not 440 anymore because it's tuned for um, the uh, middle C to be the reference pitch. So middle C in this case is exactly the same as equal temperament tuning and everything else is different in terms of the temperament. So I shall now play this one and you can compare what it sounds like. Oh well, there might be some dodgy notes at the beginning. So there you have it. Um, now the question is, which one do you prefer? Uh, if it was me choosing, and um, this follows on from my personal experience with my upright piano, I virtually never play my digital piano because equal temperament just sucks as far as I'm concerned. Um, there's just too much, uh, too much, uh, I don't even know how to describe it, but the, the, there's clearly present uh, dissonances in there, a, a lot more dissonances in, in the interactions between various nodes. In that particular piece in particular, I most note, I find it most noticeable when uh, the piece is round about at the middle section where it switches to minor chords. Um, and then there's some notes there that particularly great with me. But even if you just listen to the the uh, 
end of the piece where my playing gets more and more intense and I play it louder and louder and louder. If you compare how it sounds in this temperament with equal temperament, there is a lot more unevenness in the reproduction of those notes when they're, they're all playing simultaneously. The, um, this particular temperament, as it's designed to be, which is a minimum temperament, minimum uh, dissonance tuning, uh, has a much more even-handed harmony to it. it. I find it hard to find anything in there that really sounds off to me, whereas the equal temperament just... Um, there's multiple places I've, I find notes that just... or combinations of notes that just don't quite sound right. They sound acceptable, but they don't sound sweet. Whereas in this temperament, it, there's pretty much all of it sounds sweet. There's only one one note in particular that, well, one interval in particular that is probably by Bach's uh, composition intended, um, which is a rather dissonant chord, uh, which is only it sounds slightly off to me. Uh, only slightly off, but it's the only one. It's the only instance in that whole piece. And like I say, I've uh, used my piano on... Oh, well, I've used this tuning for, oh, I don't know, at least a decade, maybe, maybe more. I can't remember how long ago it was when I actually started tuning uh, my piano myself. Um, although, obviously, the the very first time it was pretty shit and my skills are uh, starting to get better but in terms of the overall temperament it's always been pretty much the same it's just the accuracy in terms of the um, unison tuning because my unison tuning was pretty shit it, uh, I guess the early um, early attempts I had at tuning would be coming up with a more of a honky-tonk time honky tonk type of sound from the piano because the the unisons weren't exactly unison um, and also some issues with tuning octaves as well and my octave tuning wasn't particularly good either but yeah um, this is just a short video to demonstrate that um, I can actually go through the theory behind this and and why it all works and the whole basis of it uh, which is an interesting topic in itself, but I'll leave that for another time and I'll just leave you to ponder how it is that um, you can have a tune-in that isn't equal temperament that actually works in all 12 keys. It's a rather interesting question, but it uh, does actually work. I'll leave it at that.